Before we begin to test the individual components of the charging system, first make sure that your battery electrolyte level is at its proper height within the battery. Also check to make sure that the connections at the batteries are free and clear of corrosion and are not broken. Having done all this and ensuring that the battery is in a proper state of charge, we'll begin to check the individual components. The first step is to check the charge of the battery. I'm using a digital multimeter and I'm showing a charge of 12.25 volts. Um, go ahead and write down the reading that you get on your particular battery. The next step will be to start the motorcycle up and to rev it at about 2200 RPMs with the headlight on. Note the reading and write that reading down as well. We noted a reading uh, between 14 and 15 volts with the headlight on. This is where we want to be. This tells us that the charging system is okay. What I'm going to do now, though, is to show you the procedures that you should employ had you not received this reading. And we're going to go step by step through the uh, procedure for checking the charging system. The first component of the charging system to be checked is the stator. And the stator is located on the left front of your motor. If you have a hold down clip over the stator plug, loosen up the bolt and move the clip out of the way. After you've done so, carefully remove the stator end plug. Now, as you can see, we have a two pin stator plug uh, with this particular model. The earlier shovels emplo uh, employed a four pin stator. If you have the earlier model, don't panic, we're going to cover that section right after we finish the uh, procedures for the two pin stator. The first test of the stator is to test for an ohm reading between the two terminals inside the plug of the stator. It doesn't matter which lead you put in which hole, what we're primarily interested in is the reading on the multimeter and that should be between 0.2 and 0.4 ohms, which is just about where we're reading now. From there, leave one lead in either hole, take the other lead out and touch it to ground somewhere on the, on the engine or you can just touch it to any piece of metal on the inner primary. Notice that the, uh, the needle is reading to the far left, which is infinity, which is what we're looking for. Had the needle went over to the zero, it would have indicated a shorted or open circuit inside of the stator. Now, you can also do this with the other hole if you want to be doubly, doubly sure, which we just did, and that reads okay. Now we'll go on to the third test of the stator, which will be the AC output with the motor running. To test the AC output of the stator, carefully move the multimeter dial from the RX1 position to the AC volt position. I'm going to use a scale of 250 volts because I'm going to be registering around 60 volts output AC. It doesn't matter which probe I insert in which hole. Just make sure that both of them are making proper contact and are not grounding out against the engine case itself. As you can see, we're reading 60 volts AC, which is the proper amount of output for this particular model. If any one of the three tests we just performed failed, then we would replace the stator. If you're unsure about the, the uh, steps for replacing the stator, refer to our overhaul tape. We cover it in, in depth and detail there. Now, after you replace the stator, go back to the beginning of this tape and run the same test just like we did then. If you still have a problem getting the appropriate reading, then what you'll do is replace the black box. In this case, it happens to be a chrome box. There is no test for this box. Uh, once your stator is reading properly on all three tests, then the, uh, you, can, you can very well suspect that this box has, been, has blown. And usually when the stator goes, it does take the box with it. Before we begin the test for the four pin stator, do the same battery test that we did for the two-pin stator. Make sure that the battery and the leads are okay. Now, the difference between the four-pin stator and the two-pin stator is just that there are four wires. You're not going to be able to 
uh, tell which wires go where from the, from the pins on the stator. So I'm going to show you on this plug. If you notice, the two uh, pinholes that are close to each other are going to be the white wires, okay? And the two outside wires, the top one will be red and the bottom one will be blue. And this will correspond to the pins on the stator itself. Again, top pin will be the red wire, bottom pin will be the blue wire, and the two inside wires will be the white wires. The first test will be to test for ohms between the two white leads. Touch your two terminals from your multimeter, uh, so, and we should be reading between 0.3 and 1.0 ohms. Okay, I'm reading about one, about one ohm here in the top scale just beside the zero. Any indication of zero on any of the following tests indicates that the stator is bad. Right, after, now that we're done with the white to white, let's do the white to blue. Touch any one of the two white terminals and connect the other lead to the blue terminal, which is at the bottom. When you get that reading, note it, and then touch the second white terminal, and both readings from either white terminal should be the same, to blue. Our first reading is approximately 9 ohms. Let's test, test the other white lead to the blue. And we're reading approximately the same. So let's go on to the third step in our stator test. The final ohms test will be between the blue and the red leads. Here we're looking for a reading of 1.5 to 2.0 ohms. And the reading is about 1.5 ohms. The last test that we're going to do now is to test for a short condition between the stator and the body of the motor. For this test, you can touch any one of the four leads with one probe and take your opposite probe and ground it to either a, any nut on the, on the motor or on the motor case itself. We're looking for an open reading, meaning that the needle should not move. And as we can see from the meter, there's been no movement of the needle. That indicates that there's no short condition within the stator. Having finished this last test, we're now going to go on and do an AC output voltage test uh, between all four terminals, similar to the one that we did for the two-pin stator. Touch your probes to the two center terminals. Make sure you don't ground against the case, and the reading is 60 volts, and that's well acceptable. Second test will be to touch the probes to the two outside terminals, and we should be reading about 120 volts. Our AC voltage outputs were correct for both, both uh, sets of leads. Again, I want to remind you, when you do an AC voltage, make sure that you set your meter to a voltage level high enough to read the maximum amount of voltage that you're going to be observing on the scale. Now, had any one of those tests that we just performed been bad, the same rule applies to four-pin stators that apply to two-pin stators. And that would be to replace the stator, go back to the beginning, do your battery voltage test. If everything's okay, your problem's solved. If not, check your stator one more time. If that checks out okay this time, replace the box. For those of you with the early style shovels that still use the generator, I'm going to show you how to check your generator output and to do this the same way that they do it in the shop. First of all, as you could tell, I've removed the floorboards and the foot shifter so that I have easy access to move the generator out. Before I remove the two bolts from the cam cover side, I'm going to use this paint pencil and mark the very most forward wire. I'm doing this so that when I reassemble the generator, I won't inadvertently mix the wires up. Okay, now that I've done this, I'm going to go to the other side of the motorcycle, remove the two bolts and the cam cover, and slide the generator out. I removed both wires from the armature and field terminals of the generator, and I've also made sure that the battery is disconnected. And I hope that you've done the same as well. I'm going to remove both these bolts, that's this one and this one, from the cam cover, and then I'm going to go around to the other side of the motorcycle take out the generator and carry it over to a bench. Before I begin to show you how to properly bench test your generator, I want to take a moment of your time to 
make a very important point, and that is that where to hook your leads up. As I go through this test, you'll, you're going to notice, like I have here, the red and the black leads. Always remember that the hot lead is the armature lead. Look on your generator to make sure that the letter A corresponds to the uh, terminal that you're going to hook your red lead to, and that the letter F corresponds to the terminal that you're going to hook your ground lead to. Do not mix them up. All generators are not the same. And what I've done is I've taken the liberty, I have a 12-volt battery behind me here, and I've hooked up the positive lead from the battery through this red cable to the armature terminal on this generator. I've hooked this black lead to the ground, through the ground portion of the battery to the field terminal on the generator. I also have a second wire from that ground terminal on the battery, and I'm going to place that on this back bolt. When I complete this path, you should notice that the armature will turn, and as I stand behind it, it'll turn towards my right hand. If your armature does this, then there is no problem with the generator, and you can uh, pretty much rest assured that the replacement of your voltage regulator will cure your charging problems. I'm going to go ahead and touch that second ground wire now, and we'll see what happens. Notice that the armature is turning. The generator is motoring fine. And I know at this point that my generator is capable of producing enough output to properly charge my battery. Now, if I do replace my voltage regulator, I, I will go back and redo the battery voltage test on the battery just as we did at the beginning of this segment. Remember when reinstalling your generator to keep both of the terminals forward. Okay, with the generator placed back in the motor in approximately the right position, I'm going to go around to the other side of the motorcycle and reinstall the two mounting bolts. Remember when installing the mounting bolts to be careful not to over tighten them. 20 foot pounds is about the right amount of uh, torque required to cinch them, cinch them down. If you over tighten them, you're going to crack your cam cover case. Okay, I've got both of these tightened down and they're nice and snug. So let's go on back onto the other side. We'll reinstall the wires onto the generator and I'll show you how to polarize your generator. Remember when reinstalling the wires to the generator that you install the wires in the right place. You remember that we marked this forward wire with a yellow um, paint stick and I made sure that it's in, in, on the proper terminal. Don't change the terminals over. A word of caution before we polarize the generator. Look on top of your generator and you go back to those two terminals that we had talked about earlier. In front of the terminals are the letters A and F. Make sure that when you polarize your generator, that you polarize to the A terminal. On most 12 volt generators, that would be the most forward terminal. However, on some of them, and a lot of the 6 volts, the A terminal is to the rear. But again, I want to caution you, make sure that you check to make, that you, to make sure that you're putting that positive lead onto the A terminal. Now what I've done is I've already hooked up a cable to the positive side of my battery. I got the other end here and I'm going to touch it momentarily to the A terminal on this generator. That's all it takes. Now, this bat now the battery and the generator are in proper phase. Any time that you remove the generator from the bike or the voltage regulator, make sure that you polarize the generator.